A manifesto is a written declaration. It's a written statement declaring the motives, the intentions of the person issuing the manifesto, making the declaration. And we are right now, or rather, so hopefully coming on the tail end of this experience going through COVID where we started questioning everything. We said, you know what? Why is it or why is it that we're educating our kids the way that we're educating our kids? Why are we working the way that we are that we're working? Why are we going into offices or whatever it might be? Why are we policing our communities the way that we police our communities? People are questioning higher education and its value. We're questioning money, we're questioning control, we're questioning media and information and the truth and everything else. My goodness. So why not? Why wouldn't you and I question everything? And this is not me saying you need to change your life. This is me saying, let's take a look. And if there's anything that is necessary or change that is needed, well, why not, why not do it? I'm very fond of saying that the only way to live how you want is to know how you want to live. And it seems so obvious. Don't we all know how we want to live? Don't we all know what we want? No, I, I don't think that we do. I think that even though it sounds like an obvious thing, I think that very, very few of us have an idea, a very clear idea of what we want our lives to look like. And if we have that idea of what we want our lives to look like, there are very few of us who are able to actually make that our lives, to bring that into our reality to bring it into fruition. And I think all of us have the ability to do that, or at least to get closer to it. I'm not an idealist, I'm a pretty practical guy. And I know that we get one crack at this deal. We get one lap, or lap around the track of life. So why not, why not do the work of trying to figure out what do I want my life to look like? And once I figure that out, why not? try and get closer to actually living that way. So I think that's the work and that's, that's what I wanna talk about with you today. And I want to, I encourage you, I urge you to put together your New Year's manifesto. Say, this is what I want. This is, this is what I'm gonna focus on. This is what I'm gonna stop focusing on. Um, every one of us, each and every one of us lives under certain assumptions. You've got assumptions that are that that are put upon you or you're living under for your professional work. It could be something as simple as this is the these are the clothes that we wear, this is the car that we drive, this is um, whatever it is. This is where we go to lunch every day, from little things to big things, from um, the way that you invest your money. It could be a family that has always invested in real estate and that's what you think is the best way or that's what your family thinks is the best way to build wealth. Or you could be entrepreneurial. Our family owns businesses. You could all be vegans. Our family, we do not eat animals. We, we don't eat dairy or whatever it is that vegans do. I'm halfway kidding. You get the idea. Um, and in every aspect of life, this is where we vacation. This is where people like us do things like this. That's probably a really good way to sum it up. Thank you, Seth Godin. People like us do things like this. Now, if that's serving you, and if you love that, well, there's no reason to question it. There's no reason to change things. But I bet, I just bet, that there's something you're sick of, drives you nuts. That thing, these people, just sick and tired of it. So, if you have a hard time sitting down and thinking about what it is that I want, start by thinking about what is it that I don't want? What are the things that I'm legitimately sick and tired of, I'm mad as hell and I just can't take it anymore? And let's put a plan together for at least doing a little bit less of that. I can't get rid of it completely, I get it. I'm all about incremental change and slowly but surely, uh, getting better at things. Um, so that's the stuff that I want to help you think about today and the stuff that I'm constantly thinking about myself. 
a lot of the stuff that I talk about, it's because it's things that I'm thinking about and things that I'm working on, things that have um, helped my life to be better and therefore wanted to share them in hopes that it can help your life be better as well. It's kind of the whole idea. That's the whole idea. Get better, live how you want. So, um, there is a definitive cost of waiting with everything in life. The longer we wait to do things, the harder they become to accomplish. There's a time value of money. So the longer we put off pursuing our financial goals, the more that we have to save and put towards those goals in order to achieve them. We all know it's harder to lose weight and to get in shape as we get older. Um, it's harder to learn new things. Harder, it's way easier to learn how to play violin at four than it is 54. So the longer we wait to do things, the harder it gets. And sometimes the window closes on us. And when we're younger, we think that we have all the time in the world and we certainly do have more time as we get a little bit older, that just becomes less true. The whole best time to plant a tree was 30 years ago. The next best time is today. So it's all available to you. You are able to live the life you want, but we need to be intentional about it. Finally, the kind of last thought on that is, I like to think about how we have 50 Saturdays a year. And I grew up in the Midwest, and in the Midwest, you get six months of winter, for goodness sakes. And so when summer does eventually come around, it's gotta come at some point, and you get a nice day, if you get a nice Saturday, if you get a perfect Saturday with blue sky and nice weather, oh my gosh, you take advantage of that. You try to squeeze as much into that day as you possibly can. And the same is true um, of just life in general. I think it's kind of an interesting, fun way to think about it is, how are you spending those, those, those Saturdays? But let's broaden that out and try to make every day that perfect Saturday, as close as we can to it. I'm not an idiot. I appreciate that we have obligations and bills to be paid and all that. Uh, I get it. But let's try to get as close to it as we possibly can a sense of urgency, appreciating, and being very thoughtful and intentional about who it is, what we're giving our time, attention, money to, how we're spending our time, all that stuff. That's really what this is all about. So I want to break it down um, into six areas. Because again, if I just said, hey, what do you want? You'd probably have a hard time articulating and thinking about that. So I like to think about, this is the same framework that I use for goal setting. That's essentially kind of what we're doing. Uh, we're more at this point visualizing what it is that you want and the things that you don't want. But I like to think about what I want from a family standpoint, from a community standpoint, from a uh, career and financial standpoint, from a well-being standpoint, from a um, personal development standpoint, and then from a peace of mind standpoint. So what is it that you want in those areas? And feel free to expand on that or to contract on that, to focus on one thing at a time, whatever it might be. So those are the six areas. So the whole process is think about um, what it is that is true for you in each one of those areas. So whenever Elon Musk decides that he's going to disrupt an industry or create a new category or whatever it is that he decides to do next, uh, he operates on first principles. And a first principle is effectively what is true. So uh, trying to strip away assumptions, trying to strip away comparison and just get down to what is true about this thing. So when he, um, when he decided to make an electric car, he knew that he needed batteries. When he decided to uh, start a rocket company, he knew he needed rockets. And instead of just going based on conventional knowledge and the way that people have always done things and the way we built batteries or rockets, he broke it all the way down. He said, what are these things made of? What are the necessary components? What is essential to making a battery, a rocket, or anything else? And then we'll sort of rebuild it and we'll reimagine and create the scenario that is true, free from assumptions, free from baggage, free from flawed or traditional thinking that limits us. And that's where those assumptions really come in. So 
in each one of these areas for each aspect of your life, I really want you to think about what do I really believe to be true about this? So, um, you know, for family, it's a function of I do anything for my family. Family is the most important thing in the world to me. I would bend over backwards and do everything that I can to help other members of my family. From a financial standpoint, first principles might be, you know, I need to, um, I need to spend less money than I make. I need to um, keep a budget. These are absolutely true things. So spending less than I make, I need to delay gratification. In terms of um, in terms of community, and just for each one of these things, think about okay, how can I put pen to paper and really think about what do I believe to be true about these things, about the most important things in my life. That's the first thing, and then the next stage, the next layer of it is really think about what the assumptions, the current assumptions that I'm living in, are. What are the things that are and again, these don't necessarily need to be incorrect or wrong, but they certainly could be. There's probably a lot of things that you feel like you're obligated to do that you wish that you could or you wish were different. And those are the things that I really want you to explore and interrogate reality. Once you've done that, break those down. You think about, okay, this is what I think is true. This is what I know is true. Here's the stuff that I'm dealing with, the assumptions that I'm living under. It may not be possible, but if it were, what would I like this part of my life to look like? What would that be? What does a perfect scenario look like? And don't overthink it. Just write down what it is that you really want that part of your life to look like. And then it's a matter of, how do I actually get closer to that? So whenever you make a change, you are going to run into resistance. It's going to happen. You're going to, you're going to encounter internal resistance. So the head trash that you have, limiting beliefs that you have, concerns, fears, all this stuff, patterning. You know, you've arrived at this point in your life doing things in a certain way and behaving in a certain way, a very consistent way really probably over and over again and getting the results that you've gotten. And again, if those are serving you, then that's great. But if there are opportunities for optimizing, well, that's what you need to really explore and look at. So and then you're going to encounter resistance from outside of you. You're going to encounter resistance from family members, from friends, from coworkers, from your community, whatever it might be, it's going to come. So be prepared for it. And whenever you have family members or loved ones that get on your case about making changes, no matter what those changes might be, I mean, you might be trying to quit smoking and you'll have family members or friends give you a hard time about that. How ridiculous is that? Like I'm trying to quit smoking for goodness sakes and you're giving me a hard time about it. You're trying to get me to smoke? Thanks a lot. So there's a pretty rough example, but very true. I mean, that's something I encountered. I smoked for 10 years of my life. Um, and I know that it was very, very hard to quit smoking, physiologically speaking, and from a behavioral standpoint, but also from some, uh, some, some friends in my social circle. So whatever it is, you're going to change. You're going to ruffle feathers. Friends care about you. Um, and sometimes people are just respond in a certain way because that's what they're used to doing. But just expect that. So try to anticipate where the resistance is going to come from. Recognize when it comes up. And just remind yourself, hey, I have made a decision. This is what I want my life to look like. This is the direction I'm moving in. These are the things that I want for myself. And now is the time to do it. And then it's, okay, this is what I want. This is the change I wanna make. What do I need to be doing in order to actually do that? Is there new learning that I need? Um, you know, maybe you want to make a career change. So you need just new information. You need new knowledge. You need um, some kind of a degree or a skill, whatever it might be. What is required for you to start doing the thing that you want to do? You want to lose weight. You need to learn about nutrition. You need to learn about exercise. Um, you want to learn or learn how to whatever. You want to learn a new language. How are you going to be able to do that? 
It's all possible. It's all at your fingertips. Whatever you want, for the most part, is available to you. But you need to put a plan together. And then once you've done that, then it's the whole manifesto thing. Make your intentions known, especially to your loved ones, people that are closest to you. The more we can involve them and incorporate them, it's all for the better. So otherwise, you know, people are gonna be awfully surprised if you start making massive changes. Um, but that's part of the challenge that um, interrogating reality, it does require that we, uh, we, we let others in on what it is that we're working on. Because all too often we change and we forget to tell the other people. And um, I don't want you to just throw the baby out with the bathwater and to change your entire life wholesale. Um, but some of you probably will. Some of you will make little changes. The truth is going to be somewhere in the middle. Um, and also really encourage you to, to be uh, embracing that, that incremental change. It's the time of year, obviously, when we're making New Year's resolutions and all that stuff. And, you know, 80% of New Year's resolutions get abandoned by February, which is a pretty short amount of time. So the idea is that I want you to really um, to create a very, very compelling vision for your future. Something that pulls you towards it versus you trying to push away from something else. I want you to be pulled towards that brighter vision that, that uh, brighter version for your future. So when we're thinking about what you want, really create that compelling vision. So again, the only way to live how you want is to know how you want to live. Um, my goal here is to help you get better and live the life that you want. Embrace incremental change, embrace intention. And remember, you are 100% worthy of the life that you want. You're totally capable of pursuing that life. Just got to get to work. Happy New Year.